Welcome back to theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS Storage Day. We're here in Seattle, home of the Mariners, home of the Seahawks, home of the Seattle Storm, if you're a WNBA fan. You know, cloud migration, according to our surveys and this ETR data that we use, last year was number two initiative for IT practitioners behind security. Welcome to this power panel on migration and transfer services. And I'm joined now by Matt Matthews, who's the general manager of AWS Transfer Family of Services. Sid Roy is the GM of the Snow family. And Randy Booten is the general manager of AWS DataSync. Gents, welcome to Good to See You. Thanks, Thank you. So Matt, you heard my narrative up front. Obviously it's top of mind uh, for IT pros. What are you seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, Dave, uh, certainly um, many customers are currently executing on data migration strategies uh, to the cloud and AWS is been a primary choice for cloud storage for 15 years, right? Um, but we still see many customers are evaluating um, how to do their cloud migration strategies and they're looking for, you know, um, uh, understanding what services can help them with those migrations. So Sid, wh why now? I mean, a lot of people might be f feeling, you know, you got, you got hesitancy of taking a vaccine. What about you know, hesitancy of making a move? Maybe the best move is no move. Why now? Why does yeah. it make sense? So AWS offers compelling uh, cost savings to customers. I think with our global footprint, with our 11 nines of durability, our fully managed services, you're really uh, getting the centralization benefits of the cloud, like with all the resiliency and durability. And then besides that, you are unlocking the on-prem data center and data store costs as well. So it's like a dual prong cost saving on both ends. So follow up on that if I may, I mean, again, the data was very clear, cloud migration, top priority, f f for a lot of reasons, but at the same time, migration, as you know, it's almost like a dirty word sometimes in, in IT. So, so where do people even start? I mean, they got so much data yeah. to migrate, how, how can yeah. they even handle that? Yeah, I'd recommend uh, customers look at their cool and cold data. Like, if they look at their backups and archives and they have not been used for long, I mean, it doesn't make sense to kind of keep them on-prem. Look at how you can move those and migrate those first. And then slowly work your way up into like warm data and then hot data. Okay, great. Uh, so Randy, we know about the Snow family of products. Of course, everybody's familiar with that. But what about online data migration? What can you tell us there? What's the, what are customers thinking about? Sure, so as you know, for many, their journey to the cloud starts with data migration. Right. That's right, so if you're, if you're starting that journey with uh, an offline movement, you look to the Snow family of products. If, you, if you're uh, looking for online, that's when you turn to DataSync. DataSync's an online data movement service. DataSync makes it fast and easy to move your data into AWS. How, how do customers figure out which services to use? Do you, do you, you know, how do you advise them on that? Or is it sort of word of mouth, peer to peer? How do they figure that, that, that squint through that? Yeah, so it comes down to a combination of things. So first is the amount of available bandwidth that you have, the amount of data that you're looking to move and the time frame you have in which to do that, right? So if you have a high speed, say gigabit uh, uh, network, uh, you can move data very quickly using data sync. If, if you have a slower network or perhaps you don't want to utilize your existing network for this purpose, then the Snow family of products makes a lot of sense. Call Sid. That's it, call Sid. Right. That's my yeah, answer, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, old, the old joke, right? CTAM, the Chevy truck access method. You put it right on there <laughs> and bring it over. How about, you know, Matt, I wonder if we could talk maybe about some, some customer examples, any, any favorites that you see or ones that stand out in, in various industries? Yeah, so one of the things we're seeing is certainly getting your data to the cloud is, is, is important, but also customers want to migrate their applications uh, to the cloud. And when they, when they do that, they, uh, the many applications still need ongoing data transfers from third parties, from you know, partners and customers and, and whatnot. So great example of this is uh, FINRA and their partnership with AWS. So uh, FINRA is the single largest um, uh, regulatory body for securities in the US. And they take in three, uh, 135 billion market events per day, over 600,000 uh, of their member brokers, registered brokers. So uh, they use um, AWS transfer family, uh, secure file transfers, uh, to get that data in uh, and aggregate it in, in S3 so they can um, analyze and, and, and uh, really kind of uh, understand that data so they can protect investors. So that's, that's a great example. So, so it's not just seeding the cloud. That's right. Right, it's the ongoing, ongoing uh, yep. you know, population of it. How about, I mean, how do you guys see this you know, shaping up the future? We all talk about you know, storage silos. I see this as, you know, the cloud is in some ways a silo buster. Okay, we've got all this data in the cloud now, but you know, you're going to apply machine learning, there are other tooling, so what's the North Star here? 
Yeah, that's really the North Star getting, you know, we want to unlock, uh, not only get the data in the cloud, but actually use it to unlock uh, the, the, the benefits of the cloud has to offer, right? That's really what you're, you're getting, you're aggregating all that data uh, and using the power of the cloud to really, um, you know, harness that power to analyze the data. So it's a big, big challenge that customers have. I mean, you, you guys are, you know, obsessed listening to customers. Mm -hmm. you, you know, what, what kinds of things do, do you see in, in the future, Sid and Randy, maybe? Maybe yeah. can start. Um, uh, I'll start with, uh, I'll kind of dovetail on the example uh, Matt used. Uh, I'll talk about a customer, Join, who moved 3.4 petabytes of data to the cloud. Join was a streaming uh, service provider out of Germany. They had prohibitive on-prem cost. They saved, saved 500K per year by moving to the cloud. And by moving to the cloud, they get much more out of the data by being able to fine tune their content to local audiences and be more reactive and quicker uh, reaction to business changes. So centralizing in the cloud has its benefits of access, flexibility, agility, and faster innovation and faster time to market. Anything you'd add, Randy? Yeah, sure. So we have a customer, Takara Bio. They're a biotech uh, company. Uh, they're working with genome sequencing, right? So uh, data-rich uh, information coming out of those sequencers. They're collecting and analyzing this data daily and sending it up into AWS for analysis. Um, and uh, by using data sync in order to do that, they've uh, Im improved their uh, data transfer rate by three times, and they've reduced their uh, overhead six, by 66% in terms of their process. Guys, they must be blown away by this. I mean, we've all sort of lived in this on-prem world, and you sort of lay down infrastructure, and you go on to the next one, but the use cases are so diverse. The, the industry examples, Matt, we'll, we'll give you the last word here. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, what are we looking to do? You know, we, we always want to listen to our customers, uh, but you know, collectively our, our services and working across other services, AWS, we really uh, want to help customers not only move uh, their data into the crowd, but also unlock the, the power of that data. And uh, really, um, you know, uh, we think there's a, a big opportunity across our migration and, and transfer services to help customers choose choose the right service uh, based on their where they are in their cloud migration uh, and, and all the different things they're dealing with. I've said a number of times, the next 10 years is not going to be like the last 10 years. Right. It's like the cloud is growing up, you know, it's out of the infancy stage. Yep. <laughs> Maybe it's an adolescence, I don't really know exactly, but guys, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE and sharing thank your you. insights thank and, you. and information, appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. And thank you for watching everybody. Keep it right there, more great content from AWS Storage Day in Seattle. Be right back. <laughs>